Well, I'm sure you have thought about it, but tonight is the last Sunday night of 2015. It has gone by so very, very fast, and we're on the cusp of a brand new year. And uh, 2016 is uh, a leap year at that. But uh, when you go back and you think about uh, how quickly this year has gone by, you also think about how quickly time goes by, and you think about the many changes that have taken place in your lifetime. Have you ever just stopped and sat down and just thought about some of the changes that have gone on in, in your lifetime? Uh, I can remember when I was a younger boy, I can remember that we had three channels, really two channels. We had channel six and channel ten. And sometimes we get channel four. And uh, we had an antenna outside uh, on the edge of the house and someone said you was in town I mean you was right uptown because if it was on the edge of the house they said I had to run up the, up the hill to our antenna and, uh, but your uh, TV was in black and white you remember those days you turned the TV on you got up out of your chair you walked over to the TV and you turned it on channel 6 you went back and you sat down or you turned it to channel 10 and uh, also something else that would happen every night of the world uh, the TV would sign off. Do you remember that? Remember those times and TV would sign off and I can remember that fella and uh, that pilot and that jet and he was just uh, uh, flying. They'd play the national anthem and I'd just watch him fly. And uh, I knew I'd stay up late if I got to watch him fly because it was about midnight. And then in just a moment, the TV went blank and you didn't have any more TV until about 6 o'clock the next morning. And, uh, you know, you stop and think about it. You think about some of your early presents that you get, and you think about all the different things. I can remember as a, as a boy that uh, we would have uh, milk come from Powell Valley, and uh, they would deliver milk to our house. And uh, they would deliver the, just the whole milk. We didn't have 2% cows back then. Uh, we had whole cows. We didn't even have 1%. I'd never seen a skim cow. Uh, but all of our cows were whole. And uh, then you'd have those little bitty bottles of orange juice and, uh, and what my favorite would be was chocolate milk, although we didn't get much chocolate milk. But, you know, you just stop and think of the changes. You know, when you stop and think, you, my grandparents never heard the word email, uplink, download, uh, Wi-Fi. Uh, I heard one old man say, he said, uh, we're very up to date. Me and my wife were the first one to have Wi-Fi on our blog. Uh, so there's been a lot of changes in your lifetime and, and mine. You know, we didn't have cell phones. We had walkie-talkies with about a nine-foot antenna on the uh, end of each one of them. You just stop and think about all the many, many changes. And there's going to be a lot more changes if, you know, the Lord has not come and you and I are here. And we're going to be amazed at the changes that take place in the next 10 to 15 to 20 years. But, you know, tonight I want to share with you just some truths that you and I need to glean tonight some, some things that never do change. And I just want to share out of three passages of Scripture, there's so many things I could share, but I, I want you to turn to Isaiah chapter 40, if you would, verses 7 and 8, and then I want you to turn over to the book of Malachi. We're going to look at three wonderful truths that never change. You know, Isaiah is uh, speaking. He is the penman of God. And in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 7 and 8, listen to what it says. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, because the Spirit of the Lord bloweth upon it. Surely the people is grass. The grass withereth, the flower fadeth, but the word of our God shall stand forever. I like the way it's put in the, in the Living Bible. In verse 8 it says, The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand forever. The same thing. And uh, we'll turn over to Malachi in just a moment. But I want you to just think about some things that are unchanging. First of all, the Bible says here in the book of Isaiah, the unchanging nature of God's Word. You know, I've just mentioned some things that change and styles change, looks change. If you don't believe that, you get your photo album out and you look at yourself. Uh, someone happened to give me a photo album of my brother back when my mother was 18, 19 years of age. And I looked at that picture the other day and I thought about my brother and I thought, man, you're the tallest baby I believe I've ever seen in my life. And, and we change. We're going to get older. We're going to age. But Paul, God made it very clear through his servant Isaiah that his word never changes. 
I want you to put it down someplace in your heart, maybe on a piece of paper. You might even want to write it uh, on the side of, uh, of your Bible. The unchanging nature of God's Word. Why do you and I need to know that? Because we live in a world that's telling us everything has to change. TV is changing. They're even changing channel names. They're even changing what they call certain TV channels. It's not going to be called this anymore. It's going to be called this. And we live in a chronically changing world as though everything has to change because change is for the good. There's a lot of changes that are not for the good and they're going to be for the worse. But the reality of it is, here's the reality about our God. You know, God's made it clear in His Word that His Word never changes. Why does His Word never change? Because it comes from the heart of an eternal God. God never has to put an amendment into the Bible. You never have seen anyone say, you know what, we, God got it uh, almost right and we need to add another chapter to the book of Isaiah or we need to add another chapter to the gospel of John or we need to add another chapter to the book of the Revelation. There is never going to be a time in our life or in the history of the world. Why? Because the Bible makes it very clear, God makes it very clear that His Word stands forever. You know, we're human, we're perishable, we're limited. We're a changing type of people. We believe in change. We look, if you don't believe that, look at the automobiles you, you've had. Uh, you know, maybe you learned on a stick shift. And some kids would uh, wonder, what in the world is a stick shift? I was talking to a young person the other day, and I said, uh, uh, have you uh, ever played an eight-track tape player? And here's what they said to me. I said, no, but I read about it once. We're chronically a changing society. And that lady made me feel old very fast. I mean, but here's what God makes it very clear. You and I need to be reminded that the word of our living God doesn't change. What God said 2,000 years ago, God says today. If you could walk back to the year A.D. 325 or to the year A.D. 225, or if you could walk forward to the year 3,025, if time stands, the word of our God remains the same. It never changes. It never will change. And what God says, God says. That's why whenever you pick this book up, it's never going to need an amendment. It's never going to need a change because our God is eternal and what He says is eternal. You know, God never says something that's just temporary. Everything God says is eternal. Why? Because God is an eternal being. He's not uh, limited by time and space like you and me. And when God breathed His Word... His men were used by His Spirit, and it was fixed. It's final. And that's why you pick up the Word of God. If you was in the year of uh, Paul the Apostle, you would read it in a different way. You would read it in the Greek. You would read it uh, on a scroll-type structure. But it's still the same Word of the living God. And so, you know, if time stands for a thousand more years, and if the rapture doesn't come for another thousand years... This will be the eternal Word of God. That's why as you walk into a new year, listen, you and I don't need something different. We need to get back to what is constant, what is real, what is true, and what is never going to fail us, and it's going to be the eternal Word of God. Someone said about Billy Graham one time, and he was preaching, and he was talking about men and women needing faith in Jesus Christ. And someone said to Dr. Graham, said, you're going to set evangelism back 200 years. He said, oh, that's not my purpose. My purpose is to set evangelism back 2,000 years. What's he saying? He said, the same God has never changed. And you see, whoever God is, he remains the same forever and forever. That's what Isaiah is saying. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God shall stand for all of eternity. That's why when you read the Word of God, you never have to wonder, now, what if this is not accurate? Listen, our God is the eternal God from everlasting to everlasting. When you read the Word of God, you are reading the holy, eternal Word of the sovereign of the universe. It cannot change. It is not going to change. It never will change. That's why you need to sink your heart in it. You need to sink your life in it because it's the only thing that gives you security in a very vulnerable and a very changing world. You know, Isaiah was a tremendous servant of God and and used tremendously by God. But he made it very clear, God's words are never going to need an update. He'll never add a second edition. He'll never say this is the third edition. Won't be like a lot of TV commercials where you, uh, you know, sometimes if you take a certain medicine, it'll be good for you. 
Well, it'll be good for you today and 10 years from now it'll cause some horrible disease. Have you been taking this? Call our law offices and we will help you get all the money you need. Why? Because they didn't know the full effect. That's not the way with our God. This word is eternal. You know, and as we and I walk into a new year, every time you read the word of God, that's why I'm big on encouraging you to read the word of God. It's one thing to read good books. I'm a big believer in reading good books. I enjoy reading good books. But there is not, listen, you only have so much time in the day. You can only do so much in one given day. And wouldn't it stand to reason that the best thing that Christians ought to do is to read the best book in all of the universe and it's the only book that can absolutely saturate your soul with, with truth and absolutely make your life what God wants it to be. So you and I need to read His Word. We need to get into His Word. Why? Because it's unchanging. That's why whenever you read a promise from God, it's not going to change. You know, the passage of Scripture, Whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. That's not going to change. Matthew 7 and 7 is not going to change. Ask and you'll receive. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened unto you. That's not going to change. The promises of God don't change because it's an eternal word of God. I really get bothered when sometimes I hear somebody say, Well, now, you just can't take that passage of Scripture literal. Why? You just can't take this other passage of Scripture literal. Why? Every time you and I speak, we speak literally to one another. If I said, June Johnson, how are you doing? I'm not asking her by that phrase, do you have rose bushes in your house? There's no symbolism in those words. I'm asking her, how are you doing? And God wants us to take his word literal. He wants us to believe it. He wants us to practice it. Why? Because that's the way he speaks it. He wants you and I to remember that his word is unchanging. Second of all, not only is the word of God unchanging, but the unchanging nature of God. I want you to turn to Malachi chapter 3 for a moment. Malachi chapter 3. I want you to look at one verse. Verse 6. Malachi 3, 6. I love this verse. I have said it over and over and probably you have as well. For I am the Lord. I change... What's the next word? Not. For I am the Lord... I change not. Therefore, you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Has it ever dawned on you that whoever God is and whatever God is like, He has always been that for all of eternity. If He's not, He has just declared Himself to be deceptive and to lie to you and me. And what He is saying through His servant Malachi, He said, I want you to understand that my nature is never changing. Whoever God is and however God is and the way God is, His way is never changing. Now, let me give you something to think about. If God is an impersonal God and doesn't really care about us, then He has to be that way for all of eternity because His nature can't change. It's not that He's locked in, that He don't want to change. It's not that something like that... But God has a holy nature about him, and it, that holy nature is unchangeable. And if God has, is un, impersonal, he has always been impersonal. If God is uncaring, he has always been uncaring. If God is unkind, then he has always been unkind. Why? Because he is an eternal God, and his nature is fixed. But you know what our God is? Our God is an eternally personal God. Our God is a God who knows us by name. Listen, He's the one that said, I've engraved you on the palm of my hand. I cannot forget you. He is the one who said through His servant David, said, you don't know how many times in a day that He calls you by name. And you see, if when you hear that God is impersonal, number one, you're hearing something that's not true. But if He is, He has to be that way for all of eternity because God can't change. You have a God who is going to care for you, not just today, tomorrow, next week, next month, next year. He's going to eternally care for you. That's why He's always going to have your back. That's why He's always going to love you and guide you and lead you and direct you as you allow Him to. Listen to what Isaiah 41.10 says. Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed. Listen to this. For I am thy God. Do you hear the possessive? God says, I want you to know I belong to you. 
You don't just belong to me, I belong to you. Let me give you an example. Stephanie belongs to us. But here's something else. We belong to Stephanie. She never has to worry about calling us when to catch us because not only does she belong to us, but we belong to her. We're the mom and dad, just like some of you. You have access to your children, but they have access to you. And if they need something, they'll call you by name. Why? Because not only do they belong to you, you belong to them. And, you know, when family's in trouble, all the family rallies around. Why? Because you belong one to another. And you know, Isaiah said, I want you to understand that the God that you serve, you don't just belong to Him only, He belongs to you. He belongs to you, He loves you, He leads you, He guides you. And it's not that God won't change. It's not as though He's stuck and He can't change. The eternal nature of God is fixed. He says, I, the Lord God, change not. He's eternally holy. He's eternally great. He's eternally good. He's eternally benevolent. He's eternally kind. He's eternally gracious. That's just who He is. And you know, it's so wonderful to know in a changing, mixed up, messed up world that we serve a God. I don't have to wonder, God, are you going to be the same? Have you ever known somebody that you knew them years ago, but you don't know them today? You knew what they were like, and they may have been deep, good friends in your childhood, but you don't know them today. A lot of folks that I've known through the years and, you know, as I grew up as a boy, I don't know them anymore. I don't know really where they live. I I don't keep up with them. I may see them sometimes on social media, but that's about it. And you see, you and I, as human beings, we're changing. We're getting weaker. We're getting older. We're getting a little more frail. But that's not the nature of our God. In a thousand years, we'll be off the scene and we'll be with the family of God in heaven. And if the Lord hasn't come, there'll still be the family of God on the earth. And God will not change. Why? Because He says, I am eternally changeless. And as you walk through your life, as you face so many uh, variables and so many situations in your life, God wants you and me to understand that He doesn't change. If we could walk back 5,000 years, we'd find God is the same 5,000 years ago. If you could walk back all the way back, you couldn't walk back to the beginning of eternity because eternity doesn't begin and neither does eternity end. And that's exactly what God wants you and me to understand. You know, and I love to just stop and think that my, my father, our father, he, not only am I, do I belong to him, but he belongs to me. And, and the unchanging nature of God. Sometimes we really do let our minds mess us up. I had someone call me not too long ago, said, uh, now, are you saved? I, have, I don't know if they was on something. I said, yes, I'm saved. So you think you can stay saved? And I was just listening. I was just on the other end of a conversation. And uh, this other person said, well, I just, I'm just not convinced I can stay saved. And it's amazing how our mind can mess us up. You can really get your mind messed up because believing something that isn't so. And what Isaiah said under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, he said, I want you to understand that we have a God that is unchangeable. Malachi said, I want you to understand that the Lord God, who is our Lord, who is our God, who is our Father, Malachi, under the inspiration of the Spirit of God, he says, I, the Lord, change not. And you know, as you stop and you realize, Lord, it's good to have some constants in life. That's why family is so important. Good to have a a godly mother and a godly dad. And Malachi made it very clear. He's eternally loving. Think about it for a moment. Imagine God saying, I'm sorry, I quit. Or imagine God saying, "I, I, I can't do the job any longer. Can you imagine the horror of that? Like one little boy said one time, he said, you know, He was praying for his mom and dad, and he said, Lord, please take care of yourself. If you don't take care of yourself, we're all in a mess. And that was that little child's human understanding. But you know, the wonderful thing about God, he's never going to quit. You'll never wear the grace of God out. That's who our God is. And that's, as you walk into a new year, you can think, man, it's like the song, I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he is living, whatever men may say. I see his hand of mercy. 
And that's exactly what God wants us to understand. You know, God's nature is good. It's never going to change. God's mercy is good. It's never going to change. God's loving kindness is going to all overflow. And think about it. Someday we'll get to see and experience what it's like. Some of you know Mark Lowry by name, not so much by person. Sometimes he speaks before he thinks, but he still says a great deal of truth. He said, it dawned on me not too long ago that my mom don't have to pray anymore. He said, my mom could just buck herself to the front of the line and talk to Jesus. I don't know if he meant it the way it sounded, but aren't you glad to know that we don't have to worry about our God changing? Well, thirdly, the unchanging truth of God's Word. Turn to Psalm 119 for just a moment. Psalm 119, verse 89. Now I want you just to underline this verse. It's so significant that you need to underline this. We live in a world where people are all, all the time casting aspersions at the Word of God. They're welcome to do that. They're a free moral agent. I saw some slogan. I was uh, uh, looking for something and research and studying, and I happened to come across a title of, maybe it was a booklet or something, uh, and it was uh, uh, The Virgin Birth, The Immaculate Deception. And I thought, and I just thought how, how foolish people are. But I want you to look in this verse, and I want you to really, if you would underline it in your copy of the Scripture, listen to what it says. Forever, O Lord, thy word is what? Settled in heaven. The psalmist made it very clear about the word of the living God. The word of the living God, he said, forever your word is, is settled. In other words, it's fixed. Your word is eternally true. And you see, the thing about it is, God has spoken. God has spoken in 66 books from Genesis to the Revelation. Every single book is inspired and is infallible. What that means, the word inspired, uh, inspired means it's God breathed. God breathed Genesis 1. God breathed Revelation 10. God breathed John 3. God breathed. God breathed all of His Word, and that's why it's the Holy Word of God. And, and the reality about it is it's, it's unchanging in its truth. I've had some professors through the years, and, and some professors have cast aspersions at some of the promises of God and said, now, you know, that just don't hold true today and in our time and in our culture. And, and yet God makes it very clear, and He wants you and me to be mindful. He says, His Word is settled. In other words, His Word is eternally fixed, it's eternally true, and nothing you and I can do, nothing you and I can say is ever going to change the Word of God. It's already settled. And, and I, I love to think about that when I think about the promises of God. Someone said there's 2,000 promises in the Bible. I don't know how many promises there are, but here's one thing I do know, that whenever I go to the promises of God, I never have to wonder, God, are you telling me the truth? Is this a true promise? Is this something that I can bank on? Can I, can I really you know, call on the Lord? Can I really trust you with everything? And that's why God says, I don't want you to go to this book with doubt. How many times have you picked this book up and you, you've had a little bit of doubt? You've had a little bit of reservation? You've had a little bit of, well, now, I just don't know if, if he'll do that for me. Why won't he do it for you? You see, the truth about it is, he loves you. He gave his son to die on the cross for you. And listen, if you'll give your son to die for somebody... What else is there that you'll withhold? And God makes it very clear through His Word. He said, I want you to understand, my Word is settled. My Word is eternally true. Somebody may not believe it's true. That don't change the Word of God. It just changes them. If I said, I don't believe in the law of gravity, it don't change the law of gravity. It just changes my perception and my life and my living. And, and the reality of it is, His Word is true in every avenue. And, and, and that's what you and I, when you go to the Word of God, when you need... And, and sometimes you don't have anything to go to but the Word of God. Listen carefully. Sometimes you don't know anybody to go to. You don't have a person you can go to. The only thing you know to do is go to the Word of God. That's a wonderful time. 
You know why? God has so designed it that he's not going to let anybody help you and he wants to help you himself. Listen, there's times in our lives with our children that we love that they don't have anybody to depend on but us as parents. And that's exactly what he wants you and me to do. And that's exactly what he says in his word. You know, now the Bible's not a science book, but if it speaks of science, it's accurate. The Bible's not a geography book, but if it speaks of geography, it's accurate. The Bible's not a history book, but when it speaks historically, it's accurate. Why? Because, listen, it's settled. And, and the intriguing thing about it is that no matter who a person is or what they try to do, how much they try to uh, confound or try to say the Bible is not what it is, and listen, they just always break themselves over the Word of God. And He'll always do what He says He'll do. And you know, for some of us who've lived some time and walked through this life and through this journey, you know His Word's true. There's a situation that uh, Charlotte and I have been facing the past few weeks, and we've just sort of laid it at the Lord's feet. I'm not going to tell you what it is. It's not that big of a deal, but it is a little big deal. And, uh, and I've prayed. I've said, now, Lord, you told us to ask, and I'm asking you. I'm laying this at your feet. I don't really know what to do about it. But I, you said in Matthew 7, 7, ask and seek and knock. And so I'm going to ask. I'm going to seek you, and I'm going to knock. And how do I know that I can take God at his word? Let me ask you a question. How would you love for your children to come to you and say, Mom, why do you lie to me? And you would back up and say, what in the world are you talking about? I will not lie to you. Well, Mom, you said this. Maybe you had to correct their understanding. You had to correct the way they were thinking, but you didn't lie to them. Now listen, just as you would not lie to your children, listen, our God cannot lie. He will not lie. It's not even in his being nature to lie. There is nothing in him that, that can ever bring about any type of falsehood. That's why he says in his word, he says it's settled and it's true. There is, there's no error. There's no mixture of error. There's, there's nothing that you and I need to worry about or wonder about. What we need to do is just trust him and say, Lord, I want to take you at your word. There's a song we sing, and I love that song because it is probably one of the most powerful, doctrinally sound songs to joy, happiness, and tranquility if you'll listen to the words. Trust and obey. For there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. David said it like this. He said, I've been young and now I'm an old man. But he said, here's something I've never seen. I've never seen the righteous forsaken. You know what that means? He said, I've never seen any of God's people abandoned. I've never seen any of God's people forgotten. I've never seen any of God's people wondering how they're going. Listen, he said, I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging for bread. You know why? Just as you'll care for your children, you've got a phone call right now in the middle of listening to this message. If you got a text, I need you, it's urgent. You would get up, you'd get your stuff, and you'd be out of this building in no time. Why? Because you love your family. And listen, our Lord loves us. Sometimes we sell ourselves so short. We don't think that he'll run to our rescue. We don't think that he'll come to help us in our time of need. We don't think he will because we sell ourselves short. But the truth about it is, he'll run to your rescue. That's why Paul was so serious in serving the Lord. And when things look so bleak and black and dark in Paul's life, he said, here's what I know. I know that all things work together for good to them who love the Lord, to them who are the called according to his purpose. I know that I serve a God that doesn't change. He said, I know I serve a God who is eternally changeless. I know I serve a God that is eternally true to His Word. And I know I serve a God that's eternally good. And with all of that, with everything that you face in life, how could you not say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. You know, no matter what happens, no matter come what may in a brand new year, 
no matter if some of us are not here by the end of next year. It really is all right, ain't it? Because we know who we are, we know who we belong to, and we know where we're going. Jesus said this, I want you to know I've given to you eternal life. Man, I'm, I'm anxious for that. Now, don't misunderstand. I don't want to die. I don't want to die as a real, real young man. You say, well, Pastor, if you died right now, you wouldn't die as a real, real young man. That's your opinion. <laughs> but here's the reality. We know where we're going. And in a changing world, anchor yourself in the truth. In a changing world, Anchor yourself in the God of Scripture. Anchor yourself in the very fact that He's got your back. He's going to always have your back. That simply is the way He is. Because here's what He says. I'm your God. Not only do you belong to me, but I belong to you. I belong to you. I'll come to you, aid you, give you what you need in life. No matter, come what may. Father, we thank you.